Part three of our Glacier series. Today, we head to the famous Polebridge Mercantile and Bakery and reach our most northern stop on our journey, which is 22 miles to Canada. Then come along as we hike the loop trail to the Granite Park Chalets. We're Kristen, Jameson, and Maddie. This year we're living off-grid in our motorhome full-time, adventuring up the U.S. from the Mexican to Canadian border. Today we are going to drive through the western side of the park and go out to Polebridge and visit the bakery and the mercantile there. So we'll take you along with us. We'll be going through the park and then exiting the park when we get to the town. So this is kind of a little bit of a day off for us. Still going into the park and seeing something new, but giving our legs a break from hiking before we have one last day in the park. Yeah. Maddie's with us today. She's happy to not be at daycare again. So choosing a Maddie friendly activity. All right, here we go. Bowman Lake inside the park is about six miles from Polebridge. There's a Polebridge entrance to the park, but when we were there, the parking lot was full and they were turning people away. Many visitors heading to visit or camp at Bowman Lake stop in Polebridge, so it can be quite busy. We're at the Pole Bridge Mercantile on the west side of Glacier, just technically a mile outside the park boundaries. They are known for their gluten filled treats. What'd Huckleberry you get? Bear Claw is what they're really known for. Um, I got a cinnamon roll and a pizza roll. We found out they don't make pizza till three, so a pizza, pizza roll. roll. <laughs> satisfied my lunch needs. They had a gluten-free brownie, which I was super stoked about, and they have huckleberry everything, so I got a huckleberry tea, and it's just such a super cute spot to come to and hang out. It is about 11 miles down a dirt road, mm -hmm. um, but when you get here, you would not know it. It's pretty packed and... Very touristy. Yeah, a little bit. It's awesome. Worth it. Definitely worth it. This is probably as close as we're going to get to the Canadian border on our Mexico to Canada trip this summer. The border is still closed and this road actually does not allow entrance to Canada, but we'll see if we're closer in Bonners Ferry, which we thought was gonna be our 
most northern spot, but I think it's actually 30 miles to the border. So we're here outside of Pole Bridge on the west side of Glacier and we are 22 miles to Canada. So I think that's as close as we're gonna get. to the Granite Park Chalet, uh, like a four mile trudge up with like, I think almost 2000 feet of elevation gain. Um, left Jane and um, Kristen a little far back. Look at this place, it's just so amazing. But stay here for a second and then start making my way back to meet up with them. It's so beautiful in these mountains. Just got up here, so beautiful from the views. We'll jog down to Kristen and Jane and see if we can get our way back to the car. One, two, three. It's our last day in Glacier. Mm -hmm. We are hiking the Loop Trail. Which not doing the loop though. Not doing the loop. I don't, there is no loop. There isn't? No. They just call it a loop? It is a eight and a half mile out and back to a chalet. Jameson went all the way up. I stopped and had a snack. There's footage of it. It was okay. fun. It was beautiful. Um, we were hoping to do the Highline Trail today mm -hmm. and the you either need to do like an out and back or you need to get a shuttle ticket and we weren't able to get shuttle tickets. We or tried, park. but uh, then we couldn't find parking up there. So we kind of are doing the second half of where the Highline Trail would finish as an out and back. And it's been quite nice. There's not too many people on this trail, just a few. And um, I would definitely, you can see the Highline Trail. It looks really epic. I would still recommend doing it if you can. It's definitely something we would do if we came back. Yep. Um, but you know, we have to share these parks with everybody and other people beat us to it this morning. This well, is one of the most popular parks. And a very, it's 4th of July weekend. We knew that coming here. And but. we've got to do everything we wanted to do. Yeah. Except for the Highline Trail. So two out of three. Not bad. Not bad. Um, yeah, so I just say we probably got there at seven. Yeah. It takes, however long it takes you to get to the park entrance from where you're staying, it's about an hour from the park entrance to Logan Pass. And that's where you park for the Highline Trail. So, um, you know, for us, we were coming through the park no, we probably didn't get there till eight. Um, we were coming through the park entrance around seven because we had to drop Maddie at doggy daycare. And so we probably didn't get up to Logan Pass until eight. Eight is definitely too late. Yep. So just like all to... national parks. <laughs> Earlier the late. better. Yeah. <laughs>
it. Made it to the chalet. I did. Four miles up. You guys got like four and, or three and a half, right? Yep. My watch says six, seven, eight right now. We have just a little bit further to go. Super beautiful. You can see the remnants of the past fires here and it definitely made us, not made us, it gave us an overview that we wouldn't have gotten in the past, but you could definitely see that that fire was big. Yeah, some open viewpoints and things that might not have been there if the forest was still alive, <laughs> uh, but it's part of it. And they, we learned on our boat tour that they don't put out fires in Glacier unless they're man-made or like really raging out of control. Any natural forest fire, they let it burn itself out. It's part of the cycle. So the hike was pretty great. And there's this awesome waterfall right close to the trailhead. So if you're hot on the way out, you can dunk your feet or your head and maybe have a swim. It's not super deep, but.